So here at the High Times Medical Cannabis Cup, we are now going to be visiting with Joe Grumbine, who has got quite the story to tell here in California. So uh, I will let Joe tell it. Joe, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. I like to say I'm currently out of custody, so it's a good day. Any day that you don't wake up behind bars is a good day. Exactly. Well, let's tell folks about why that's a concern for you. Well, um, I had a, well, I have an ongoing case. I was a collective operator and uh, was raided back in uh, 2009 and uh, just... Which, st which cities you're collective in, by the way? Well, we were in Long Beach, and okay. we, were, we also had a place in Garden Grove. Okay, and Long Beach and Garden Grove. Yeah, right. exactly. So Southern California. Anyhow, they filed on us and, um, you know, made me an offer I couldn't refuse, but I refused it. I've got no criminal record prior to this, and I don't believe that anybody should have one for this. So right. I also believe that the law is supposed to protect me. That's why I did what I did, why I took the chance and put a target on my head. Uh, believing that the law would stand behind me if I did it a certain way. And so anyways, they put everything they had. I'm not quite sure what caused it to be this way, but the judge sided really heavily with the prosecutor. And um, there was, it was a travesty. I mean, there were, yeah. there were, you now, know. You, you, were you able to say in court that this was all about medical collective under They allowed me to say that, but but not under 420, okay. you see. Okay, okay. They, they limited what we were allowed to do. This judge was very biased, and he allowed the prosecution to do anything they wanted. And us, I couldn't mention the law. I couldn't mention 420 AG guidelines. I couldn't mention... They withheld evidence that they seized from me. They wouldn't let me <laughs> present it. They seized it. They used it against me, but I couldn't use it for me. Like, wow. Yeah, like minutes from our our you know director's meetings. I, I kept minutes. I did the things they told me to do, yeah. but they wouldn't let me use it. So at the end of the day, I got convicted. Um, but we did a couple of really bold things in this trial. Um, prior to it going to trial, the the prosecutor had motioned for us to have no defense. The judge granted it, and I had no medical marijuana defense. We went to the Fourth Circuit uh, Court of Appeals in California on a Hail Mary pass, and we filed a writ to overturn that, and it never happens. They don't ever take cases prior to trial, but for whatever reason, they took this one, they granted the motion, and we won in appellate court um, our ability to have a defense. So we walked in there empowered. I mean. You know, I said, screw you. If I've got a defense, I can win this. Right. You know, if I was, you let me tell the truth. All I wanted was, <laughs> all I wanted was a chance to talk, right? Yeah, yeah. Let me Let me show you how it was. And and so the judge was pissed. And he said, we, you know, we all asked if we could have a little bit extra time. You know, we just today got granted a defense. Tomorrow, I'd like to prepare it. And the judge says, no, we're moving forward. Right, right now. Right now. We're you need not a defense, winning. but you have to make so it up right now. They called in the jury, <laughs> and yeah, yeah, it was crazy. So that was where it all got ugly. Everybody was like, what? Nobody <laughs> could believe it. So luckily, um, I've got a group called The Human Solution that I helped to found, and we provide court support, and uh, we raise money for legal defense and things like that. But I was able to have, you know, 20, 30, 50 people there in the courtroom with me watching this. Because otherwise, you know what? You don't have anybody watching, anybody documenting what's happening. Weird stuff can happen. Yeah, Nobody people don't understand it. that that's one of the best things you can do. Like, like, what can I do as an activist? What can I do as an activist? Just sit your butt, show in, a court, up. <laughs> yeah, sit your butt in a court seat for a while. That's what we say. Though. You know, all you got to do is show up. That's yeah. it. No training, no money, no anything. Just just show up and sit in a seat. And by I, showing up, you're doing more than you know 90% of them. 99%. I, I, I love things like this. But it's funny, if you look over the side where everybody's medicating, yeah. it's wall-to-wall -wall people. Yeah. You come over here to the nonprofit side, the activism side, yeah. there's some people. Yeah. Um, but you know, you look at where energy goes in this community, man, if we could just really tap some of that, what a difference we could make. Yeah. If every one of those guys signed that petition, maybe by now we'd have this thing fixed. Yeah, I have a, I have a standard stump speech that I do at uh, Seattle Hemp Fest every year, and I, I get up on stage, and there's 50,000 know, tokers out right. there in front of me, and I'll say, how many people love to smoke weed? Right. Like, ah, ah, yeah. say, how many people have called your congressperson this year? Cricket. Yeah, Cricket. totally, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Well, I, you know, I, our group is a grassroots organization, and we, we try to educate people as well as support. And my role in this is I, I try to get people 
um, to get people. Yeah. You know, the key to this thing, if you can catch a teacher, if you can catch a leader, find one and get them to start doing their thing, yeah. that's how this thing's going to spread exponentially. So you mentioned uh, your group, The Human Solution. That's correct. Uh, working to you know help people in these legal dire straits. Uh, give people like a website, contact, and tell people what it is. You bet. Well, The Human Solution is a nonprofit grassroots organization. We're not a collective of any kind. We're just a, a patient advocacy group, and our mission is to provide education and support to cannabis patients, providers, POWs, and the community at large. And so what we do is we, we set up tables, I do workshops, um, I'll come into collectives and spend time with patients um, and a number of different topics, but everything from public speaking to jury nullification to how to be an activist, what can I do? I, I, I have a presentation called The Power of One. You know, what one person can do, and I think most people, they don't act because they don't think their action will have an impact in the world. Sure. And I believe quite the opposite. You know, if you go out there and you look, make yourself real small, look at the stars and say, the universe is something huge, I'm nothing, right? And yet, I can have an impact across the entire fabric of time and space by doing certain things. And mostly it's showing up and deciding I want to do something. That's right. And then maybe talking and maybe and then maybe getting somebody else to talk. I mean, it's, it's, it's exponential. So that's what we're about. Um, we also, court support is a huge piece of what we do. It's something that I truly believe this law is gonna be fixed in the courts faster than it's gonna be fixed on the legislative. Yeah. And, and here's why. I believe that too. I don't, personally, I don't think any of these initiatives are gonna make it through. I don't think there's enough support for them. This, this year, and if yeah. they don't come this year, who knows what's going to happen. Right. Meanwhile, every single day, in every single courtroom, in every city, in every county of California, and all the other states, there are defendants sitting in front of judges and having their lives changed, usually for the worse, as a result of our justice system and our, our policy of prohibition. And that's what the reality is. So yeah. if we can get to jurors, if we can get to people and, and get them to realize what they're doing, you know, I don't think even half of the jurors realize what oh, they do. No, we when they it. convict somebody, they go, oh, well, yeah. they don't know the sentencing. They don't know anything. They just said, you're guilty. You broke the law. No, we, we see it in trial after trial where afterwards, you know, we, they, the jurors are informed what the hell just happened. Right. And, and they break down in tears. Right. Some of them. Oh, my like, God. Oh, my what God. I, I can't done? believe what I just did. Right. Yeah. So we have to get to them before. And so I try to train jurors. I try to educate them. Let them know not only about jury nullification. That's huge. But you know what? Somebody brought up a really good point. Jury nullification happens all the time in the South, yeah. and not for good necessarily. Right. So <laughs> to advocate for that could have an unintended consequence. But really, I believe that most of the people that are doing bad are going to do it anyways, and they're already doing it. But if we can inspire some people to do right, I think alcohol prohibition began to change in the courtrooms. And people said, wait a minute, this is stupid. People were getting their lives destroyed over, over a drink. Yeah. No more different than a plant, in my eyes. I have a, a, a very simple philosophy about this. We come to these things and there's all these different organizations, Normal and NISA and MAP and all these different groups. And oftentimes they don't get along real good and I think it's the worst thing in the world. So I always say, what ties us together? And I say right off the bat, no one belongs in jail for a plant. Yep. Start there. And if we can, whatever, whatever else you got going on, Start there. We yeah. all can agree on that. I have a, I have a friend, an activist friend in Oregon, uh, Jennifer Alexander, who put it like this. She said, instead of concentrating on whether you're a spiritualist or a medicalizer or a legalizer, how about we're all just anti-prohibitionists? Beautiful. We're exactly. all just anti-prohibitionists. Right, right, right. Exactly. I, I firmly believe that. So, <clears throat> anyways, uh, a big part of what we do is court support. I believe that... Um, I've sat in a lot of courtrooms and most of them empty and it's the norm for a defendant to sit in a courtroom by himself with his lawyer, maybe a family member. It's not normal to have a defendant sit in a courtroom and have the seats full. Standing room only. They don't do that. That only happens in real high profile cases where a celebrity is involved or, or, or a cop getting killed or something like that. Other than right. that, nobody cares. I've been there dozens of courtrooms in dozens of cities and it's, they're all the same. But when we show up and we've got 20, 30 people all dressed well, all behaving on their best behavior, uh, I, I 
I offer to people to put on a symbol, a solidarity ribbon, or something that says that identifies it, says we're all together. It makes a difference. We've walked in and seen prosecutors get all weird and, and nervy and throws them <laughs> off their game. Yeah. They complain about us. I've had my ribbon be asked to be removed from four different courtrooms, and on no case was it, was it granted. We've always been able to bring our ribbon in. Good. So we have this solidarity ribbon. It's a little green ribbon with the red cross on it. Our patients and volunteers make these things as a symbol of solidarity. It doesn't say anything other than I support cannabis patients. Just like yours does, mm -hmm. same thing. Yeah. So we've created this one that sort of stands out as a little different, and we get them in courtrooms. We get them in uh, when we show up at a city council meeting or a, a county board meeting. Same thing. We all show up unified. Why it not? makes a difference. So. Well, Joe Grumman, you're fighting the good fight here, and I know there's still plenty left to fight. Oh yeah, we're a long way from being done. I wish you all the best of luck, and that everything turns out as well as possible. The Human uh, Solution? Absolutely. Uh, is it website humansolution.com? Yeah, the, the humansolution.org. Oh, dot org, okay. Yeah, absolutely. All and right. we've got a Facebook presence and Twitter and all that, so right on. look look for Human Solution and we'll we'll set you up, show you how to be a better activist. All right, humansolution.org. Thank you so much, Joe, Thank for stopping much. by and have a good uh, medical care. All right, let me give you one of my ribbons. Oh, fantastic. If Thank you'd you. wear it, I'd be honored. I would love to. There you go. You got an all red one. Oh shoot! <laughs> kind of disintegrated there. Yeah, uh, you got a um, a lighter? Uh, oh no, I got it. It was just a thread. All right, we'll be right back with our raffle right after this.